What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today we are continuing our look at the Transformers trading card game by looking at, clearly, one of the coolest Transformers ever, it's Grimlock. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we know what Grimlock does, and when Grimlock is revealed, Rossi wants to sit and have a look at a bit of the old Grimlock. He is the Dinobot's leader, and I can see some uses for him. Now, I do need to give the usual reminder here. We don't know all of the cards in the set. They are all being revealed. We don't know them all yet. I'll, of course, profile a whole bunch of them. Hopefully, eventually, all of them on here. We don't have a meta game. We don't have a best deck or any of that. So do please bear in mind that I'm going to give you the best analysis if I can at the moment, but these things are subject to change as new cards get revealed and as a metagame forms. So, he is a Dinobot. More on that in a minute because there are some cards which are really quite good for Dinobots. We have some other Dinobots that work well with him. And he is a leader card. And there is something good about being a leader card because Matrix of Leadership gives you one more attack as an upgrade card. And when it's on a leader which of course it will be with Grimlock, each of your characters has plus one attack and PS1, which is nice. PS1 guarantees that you do a minimum of one damage. So if we have a quick look at the base stats here in bot form, you've got an attack of six, which is higher than the average attack of four. You've got a defense of two, which is right in line with the average, and a health of 12, which is right in line with the average. If we flick over into alt mode, you've got an attack of four, which is right in line with the average, a uh, defense of two, and health of 12. With the character cards that have currently been revealed, the alt mode of Grimlock is the average transformer in terms of attack, defense, and health. Although it is slightly above average in terms of cost, the average character card costs eight, whereas this one costs 10. Having said that, we do have skills here and they may well make up for it. If we have a quick look at bot mode, when you do more than enough damage to KO an enemy, your opponent chooses one of their other characters and puts the extra damage on it. This is a phenomenal skill because you've got a base attack in bot mode of six and you may well be using action cards and upgrade cards to make this higher. If you're attacking a character that's only got four health remaining, you do six damage, they've got four health remaining, and essentially two damage is wasted. That is not the case with Grimlock here. Your opponent does get to choose which character it goes on to, but either way, that attack isn't wasted. That extra damage is going on to one of their character cards, which is wonderful. From the wording of the card, it seems like this only happens once, i.e., let's say you're doing a Eight damage total and there is four health remaining on one character card you do the four and then the four goes somewhere else your opponent could then choose a character with two health remaining and you would KO that but then the other two would then the other two damage would essentially be lost to the ether either way this is wonderful I've not seen an effect like this on other character cards and it just means that you can do as much damage as you like and it's not going to be wasted it means that you can essentially KO a character that you want to KO whereas otherwise you'd be thinking well I could KO this character or I could do six damage to this one rather than only one to KO the other I adore this skill on Grimlock and I think this is really what makes it amazing although I say that when you flip him into alt mode, which we're going to be calling T-Rex mode for fairly obvious reasons, when you flip him into T-Rex mode, one of your Dinobots gets bowled free until the end of the turn. What that means is they flip three more cards when attacking. Now again, it all depends on how you build your deck, what action cards and what upgrade cards you use. But let's say you hit an average of one orange icon per card, then you're doing an extra free damage. That's really, really good. So you've basically, when you're attacking, that's awesome because you get to over damage and put it on another transformer. And then when you flip over to T-Rex mode, you get to give one of your other Dinobots bold free. And we've got some Dinobots that are going to want to do a bunch of extra damage here. So the one that really sticks to my mind 
Well, Dinobot Slug. Now, the thing about Dinobot Slug is there's no skills. There's no extra stuff here. It's a vanilla card. However, in bot mode, it's got a base attack of six, which is the highest of all of the Dinobots other than Grimlock itself that have currently been revealed. Or you could go Dinobot Snarl or Dinobot Swoop, either of which have a base of five if they're in their bot mode. Then, of course, you flip the regular two cards just for attacking, but with this, you're actually flipping five. It also does mean you're going through your deck a little bit faster, so if you run out of cards in your deck, you shuffle your scrap pile and it turns into your deck. So one of the cool things you could do with Grimlock here is actually go, well, all the cards I want to use are in my scrap pile. I really want to just get to the end of my deck so I can reuse them all. And you can actually flip to Grimlock here, get bold free. And yes, you get to do extra damage, hopefully, by hitting more orange icons. But you also get to flip three more cards, which means that you're actually going to go through your deck that little bit quicker, get your scrap pile reused, maybe a turn or two faster than you otherwise would. As much as I like the T-Rex mode, here, I really do think a lot of the joy from Grimlock is going to come from bot mode. Because you've got that attack of six, which is high, it is higher than average. And the fact that you can essentially overkill a Transformer, putting a damage on something else, the question then becomes, well, what do you want to do to make sure you're maximizing your attack here? Well, there are a couple of cards which are really good for Dino Bots. So, Dino Chomp. Dino Chomp is a weird one, right? Because you've got to scrap your hand, your entire hand, so you end up with zero cards in hand. That's not great. But then one of your Dinobots gets bold five until the end of your turn. That means you flip five more battle cards when attacking. So it's an action card. You play Dino Chomp, get rid of your hand, and then Grimlock essentially is flipping over seven cards when you're attacking. This does also mean you'll be running through your deck very fast at this point, but that's good because in theory you'll be doing a whole bunch of damage, bearing in mind the extra goes on to another character, although I do need to stress it's your opponent that chooses. Now you might be thinking, well hang on a second Wossy, that, that doesn't sound great because you end up with no hand. Well we have got Dinobot Snarl Desert Warrior, and when you flip to the alt mode, and you have zero cards in hand, you draw two cards. So that actually guarantees that you won't have a hand of zero. So you could essentially use this, do the attacking, and then flip over Dinobot Snarl to get two cards. It's not a perfect combo, but it does at least stop you having zero cards in hand, which is pretty gosh darn nice. The other one I really like here is just the bigger they are. It's an action card. One of your characters gets plus two attack until the end of the turn. And if the enemy's got more stars in it, then it gets pierce four, guaranteeing that it does at least four damage. You don't have to scrap your hand, but you've got to think that flipping over four more battle cards when you attack is going to lead to more than plus two attack. Again, it depends on how you build your deck, but you can choose your action cards, etc. to make sure you've got the right icons to try and do this. Now, we do also have a Dinobot-focused upgrade card here. We have Jaws of Steel. This is an upgrade utility card. Remember, with upgrades, you can have one weapon, one armor, one utility. This is a utility card, which can only be put on Dinobots, but it gives you bold too. As a fun side note, it's also got an orange icon there, which is good because... You want to be attacking with Grimlock. And actually, if you use Grimlock combined with Jaws of Steel and Dino Chomp here, then actually you get Bold 5 with Dino Chomp. Plus you get Bold 2 with Jaws of Steel. You're flipping 9 battle cards when you attack. And it's one action card, one upgrade. It's not like this is the most difficult combo ever to pull off. And of course, we need to mention Grenade Launcher. We're going to be mentioning Grenade Launcher in a lot of videos. But Grenade Launcher gives you plus four attack. It is an upgrade weapon. And after you attack, you do have to scrap the card. But that would then give you a base attack of ten and let you flip nine battle cards when you attack. This is why I'm loving Grimlock. Don't get me wrong. Giving one of your other Dinobots bold free seems like fun. I'm sure there will be uses for T-Rex mode. 
But when you're in the bot mode here, if you combine Grenade Launcher, Dino Chomp, and Jaws of Steel, then we have a character card with an attack of 10, just that it's one attack, but still an attack of 10, flipping over nine battle cards when you attack. That's ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. I like Grimlock. I'm a Dinobot fan anyway, right? So I was always going to try and make a Dinobot deck. That was always going to happen. But honestly, I'm looking at Grimlock here and I'm thinking, yeah, this looks pretty good. The stats are right on average other than the attack in bot mode. And it is a shade more expensive than your average character. But I love this skill on the bot mode Grimlock here. I think it's absolutely wonderful. And I, I expect Grimlock to see a bunch of play. I know we don't have a meta yet, and I can't say that for certain. But of all the battle cards I've seen so far, I was gonna, always going to love Grimlock, because it's Grimlock. But now I'm looking at it and being like, I love this card. I want to build a deck around this card. But I want to know what you think. Are you loving Grimlock? Are you a bit like Wossy? You're getting overly enthusiastic because he's got T-Rex mode. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but do be nice. Also, make sure you like this video. Make sure you're subscribed for more Transformers videos. My Transformers output is going to start accelerating quite speedily from here on out as we get closer to and over the release of the game. I'm going to try to do daily videos from now until release because, you know, Transformers. So much fun. And do follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where more of my Transformers and other card game thoughts will be shared. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wossy Plays.